In 2020, there were 156 attempts to ban or restrict library materials in the United States. This was one of the lowest number of attempts in a downward trend beginning in 2003 at 458 attempts. However, in the short time span of just two years, 156 attempts raised by more than eightfold. 2022 ranked the highest amount of attempts to ban or restrict library materials in the U.S. at 1,269 attempts. So, what's all this fuss about banning books? This is Leela Rose Denver. She's an instruction and outreach librarian here at ASU Libraries. She instructs ASU students of all levels on how to use the library. She also manages her library guide on the topic of banned books. The reality is that banning books is not about morality and it's not about ethics, it's about power and control. In fact, banning books poses a huge ethical risk to our society's ability to move forward both intellectually and economically. Book banning is also in direct opposition to our right to free speech as protected by the First Amendment. When institutions start banning books, scholars and authors begin to censor themselves before anyone else can for fear of being penalized. This creates intentional gaps in our knowledge systems. And as a librarian, I spend a lot of my time trying to identify these gaps in knowledge systems. Anything that creates these intentional gaps is a direct threat to our intellectual freedom. Before we get into it, you'll often hear folks talk about banned and challenged books interchangeably. What's the difference? A banned book is a book that has successfully been removed from curricula and from shelves. A challenged book is a book that is currently being petitioned either by individuals or by groups um, or by institutions to have the book removed from shelves. So a banned book is one that's already been removed and banned and a challenged book is one that, that is at high risk of being banned. So in like some states, a book can be banned and another can be challenged? Exactly, yeah. Certain states have more book bans than others, including Florida and Texas, and this is sometimes because certain state laws are interpreted by institutions or individuals either as a mandate or as an encouragement to ban a book. A handful of book ban cases have made their way to the Supreme Court, but none have successfully passed. So book banning occurs, again, on a local but not on a national level. When a book is banned, that does not make it illegal to read, but it does make it difficult or nearly impossible to access. Again, this is because book banning is not an act of legality, but it is an act of censorship. Especially the doesn't make it illegal, I think that's a common question, and it's it doesn't make it illegal, yeah. it's just very difficult to access. Yeah. There's a long and sordid history when it comes to banning books. Book banning began with book burning, and the authors of these books and the people who read these books and shared the message that these books had were at risk of penalty, often penalty by death. This began in 213 BCE, so you can see that the fight against book banning has been long and arduous, lasting millennia. And throughout the history of book banning, religion has played a huge part in determining who should have the privilege of voice and who should not. If you were writing or reading material that went against the dominant religion at the time, you can almost expect to be penalized, oftentimes by death. It's important for me to point out this piece of religious fervor that has buoyed book bans throughout the centuries, because I believe that one of the major ethical risks that book banning poses is a threat to our right of separation between church and state. While book banning has yet to reach the level of law, that is not to say that people have not been fighting tooth and nail for centuries to have book bans become law. In the past, books were banned primarily if they were scientific or spiritual in nature, or if it was a religious text that reflected the non-dominant religion at the time. This includes the burning of thousands of indigenous texts, including those of the Mayans and Aztecs in the 1500s by Spanish Catholic conquistadors, but it is important to point out that that was not and is not the only instance of this horrendous practice. Today, the most commonly banned books have to do with race, class, and sexuality, and are often written or about people of color and queer people. Again, book banning is ultimately not about morality and ethics. It's about those in power keeping their control. It's about maintaining the status quo. As of 2022, the top three most challenged books in the U.S. are as follows. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison at 73 challenges. All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson at 86 challenges. 
and Genderqueer by Mayako Babe at 151 challenges. These three books have been challenged for similar things such as containing LGBTQIA content, sexually explicit content, and EDI themes. So, how do we combat the censorship? So 2022 marked the year with the highest number of book bans in the last 20 years. Banning books may be an issue that is thousands of years old, but it's just as relevant today as it was in 213 BCE. With that said, there are several different ways that you can get involved in combating the banning of books, and Banned Book Week is one of the most fun and accessible ways that you can do that. Keep an eye on your local or school library's events during the first week of October and get engaged. I would also encourage you to take a look at some of the banned book lists. You might recognize a title on there, and it may be a book you really love. If you find a title on there that you really love, I'd encourage you to read that book during Banned Book Week and to talk about it and share about it on social media and generally keep the conversation going. If you find a book on that list that you do love, check it out from your local library or purchase it. The more support that you can give banned or challenged books, the harder it'll be to ban them. ASU Library has a really awesome library guide on banned books, and that's a great place to find some of those banned book lists that I mentioned before. And you can also find some really eye-opening statistics about banned books and the history of banning books there. We also celebrate Banned Book Week during the first week of October, so keep an eye out for some special events, for tabling on all four campuses, and some cool buttons and stickers that you can grab. Finally, there is a collection on censorship in the works, and you will be able to access that on the Banned Books Library Guide.